And then SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and sometimes now called small intestinal microbial overgrowth, because it's not just bacteria, it's viruses and parasites and fungi. We have a whole, a whole um, host of multiple organisms that live in and on us. But SIBO is when bacteria that normally live in the colon migrate upstream. They may do that because we're stressed or we're not sleeping or we've taken antibiotics. Um, and when that happens, those bacteria that move up where they're not supposed to be can cause a lot of physical symptoms. They can interfere with the production of vitamins and absorption. They also can start to ferment carbohydrates that are not supposed to be fermented in the small intestine. And so we can get gas and bloating and constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain. So it's felt now that many people, probably the majority of people with irritable bowel syndrome, how many of you know irritable bowel syndrome, what I'm talking about, very common term, but, um, but probably most people with irritable bowel syndrome have SIBO or SIMO. And the symptoms are abdominal pain and discomfort, bloating, gas, belching, and people can have either diarrhea or constipation. Either way, depending on the kinds of bacteria that happen to be thriving in your gut. So you may look like this guy after you have that nice big bowl of pasta <laughs> or your applesauce or whatever. There are some foods that are more likely to do this than others. So what are some risk factors? Again, all this stuff kind of keeps coming back to the same, same thing, low stomach acid. You know, I have so many patients who come in and they've been on Prilosec for 10 years, 20 years. They're, why? Because when they stop taking it, they get symptoms again. Well, that's how those drugs work. When you stop taking them, you get this rebound acid, and then guess what? You want to start taking them again, and the drug companies are very happy about that because you keep taking their drugs or if you've had lots of antibiotics. It can sometimes take a year or more for your gut to recover from a single course of antibiotics. Clindamycin is one drug. Flagyl is another one. So when we're taking a lot of courses of antibiotics, it affects the gut. If we don't have enough pancreatic enzymes, if we've had bowel surgery, diabetes. Diabetes is often associated with this abnormal pattern of bacterial growth in the gut. If you've got a bowel motility disorder, your bowel's not working well. Moderate or heavy consumption of alcohol also changes gut, uh, gut bacteria. And then multiple meals and snacks during the day. I tell my patients, eat two or three meals a day, try not to snack, because when we're not eating, that's when the small intestine actually works best. It's when it contracts best, and it's when it clears itself out.